Your golf coat weather authority. This is Fox 26 Morning News. In depth this morning, Texas gender laws, a new law right here in the Lone Star State makes it legal for a man who was born male to marry another man, but only if one of them has had a sex change. Fox 26's Christine Galvan takes a closer look at the legal issue the attorney general refuses to give an opinion on. She is the much talked about widow of a warden firefighter killed on the job. A woman whose life started with a birth certificate that classified her as a boy and now continues as a woman. Since her birth, Nikki Aragus has had a sex change operation, and that's all she needed in order to marry a man, according to a year-old amendment to the Texas Family Code. Texas law now says you can get a marriage license after a sex change. That's right. In a state governed by traditionally conservative lawmakers, marriages involving a transgendered partner are now legal. But the issue is not clear cut. In fact, just last week, Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott declined to issue an opinion on a case involving this couple. On an El Paso, Texas newscast, Sabrina Hill, who was born a man, transgendered as a woman, and is now married to another woman, talked about the legal issues concerning her relationship. El Paso County would not marry them, but Bear County did, and Abbott doesn't have anything to say about it. Daryl Steidley is Aragusa's lead attorney. Were you waiting to see what Greg Abbott would do or say? Yes, of course. We were interested that, to see what the response was going to be. I don't think he wants to jump into this political hotbed in an election year. That's what I think. And that's a shame because that's why we elected him, is to interpret and give us these, these rulings on these laws so we know, how to, we know how to operate and know how to do. I think that he is shirking his responsibility, and it's a shame. A spokesperson for Abbott's office says there's nothing unusual about his decision to decline giving an opinion when litigation is pending. And right now, the Aragus case is in the court system. But part of the reason the law is so unclear goes back to 1999, when a Texas court ruled a person can't change their sex for the purpose of marriage. In other words, you are what you were born. So what we have here is couples who, I started out a man, I now look and appear to be a woman, but under Texas law, I'm still a man, so I will marry this woman. So it appears that we're marrying a same-sex couple. Transgendered activists fighting for equal rights took advantage of that perception to prove a point. They married as heterosexual couples, even if, much like the El Paso case, they didn't look the part. You have statute, case law that says one thing, the family code says another thing, the Texas Constitution says we don't recognize same-sex marriages. Tritico says the legislature trumps the opinion of the court. The Aragus defense team says that's good news for their case, even though Nikki married before the law was updated. But as that battle continues, so do the questions. Christine Galvan, Fox 26 News. And as you can imagine, this topic is raising a lot of questions and stirring up mixed emotions to get both sides of the argument. Fox 26's Sibylla Vargas mediated a debate last night during our 9 p.m. newscast. So joining us now is Dave Welch. He's the executive director of the Houston Area Pastor Council. And Kristen Williams, she is the executive director of the Transgender Foundation of America. So I'm going to get right in there and ask the question, should transgender and transsexuals be allowed to legally marry? Let's start with you, Dave. Well, we believe that the intent of the people in adopting the constitutional amendment in 2005 is very clear. And state law defining uh, what a, a, the gender should be is defined at birth based on three specific criteria. It makes it very clear, so no, it should not be accepted. The law is very clear. Now, Kristen, what do you have to say about this? <laughs> well, I would say the law is very clear also. Um, the term sex change is not ambiguous. Um, the, I think that the legislature knew exactly what they were voting on whenever they voted to recognize sex changes and put it right in the middle of Texas family marriage law. Well, if you listen to Christine's package, there is some confusion. So what needs to be done to clear it all up? 
couple I would say there definitely needs to be some legislative clarification on on both what the uh, distinction between a male and a female is we didn't think at, at ever any point in previous history we would have to get that far but clearly we're there uh, and that needs to substantiate in order to uh, be able to defend and define the, the constitutional amendment that was passed by the people to define marriages only between one man and one woman and most people know what that means wow. well, Dave, and actually I agree I agree with Dave um, you know I think common sense sense should uh, be something that we look at. You know, Nikki uh, had a judge proclaim her to be female. She has a female birth certificate. Uh, she was in a heterosexual marriage. The marriage was legal. Uh, there is an argument out there. Uh, some critics say that the government should not be involved in regulating relationships at all. What do you say about that, Dave? Well, it's been an issue that's has come up frequently during the debate over the definition of marriage. Uh, and of course, we do believe that the state has a compelling interest in what marriage is, because uh, children raised in a marriage relationship with a male and a female, as it should be, are happier, healthier. It's the foundation of our society. So when marriage breaks down, mm -hmm. and then, then the society breaks down, and uh, uh, gender has always been accepted to be what we are born with. Uh, when that child comes out, we've been blessed with six of them. Uh, we don't have to have a committee and, uh, and a study on what that is we hold up and say Unless it's a boy or it's a girl to be intersexed well you can't legislate and have public policy around a fractional percentage of, of a, a population uh, yes, but whenever that population has a basis in biology, we have to recognize that and we have to deal with that. Well, we can't undefine an institution that has been at the foundation of our society over a fraction of 1%. That's, that's pretty clear at this point, and we have to defend so what marriage is. So your argument is majority rules, and those people who are born this way, they're just out of luck. No, we have to legislate on what is right. Well, clearly, uh, you're both at odds. It certainly is an issue with a lot of complexities. And uh, like I said earlier, there's no way that we're going to get through it all today. So we definitely, though, appreciate your thoughts. Dave Welch from the Houston Area Pastor Council and Kristen Williams, the Executive Director of the Transgender Foundation of America. Thank you again.